Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2021 Unit 1, Paper 2, and this was a question on chemical equilibria. So this was question 2, Part C, and it says, when a 0 0.218 mole sample of hydrogen iodide was heated in a flask of volume V dm cubed, the following equilibrium was established at 700 Kelvin. So here we have two moles of hydrogen iodide in the gas phase being equilibrated with one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of iodine gas, okay? So the equilibrium mixture was found to contain 0 0.023 moles of hydrogen, okay? So now we have to calculate the number of moles of iodine and the number of moles of hydrogen iodide in the equilibrium mixture. And so to, in order to do this, we're gonna have to set up our ice table. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna write here, initial, my initial concentration is gonna go here. Initial concentration is gonna go here. Then I'm gonna have my change in concentration. That's what the C means. Change in concentration. And then here I'm gonna have my equilibrium concentration. So my final concentration, so to speak, once everything has equilibrated at 700 degrees C. So then I'm gonna put HI here. So this will be the column for HI. This will be my column for H2, that hydrogen, and that will be my column for iodine. Okay. So initially, what we know is that we have a sample that contains 0 0.218 moles of hydrogen iodide. So because it's concentration, I need to put my moles, right, over the volume of the flask. And so I'm going to put 0 0.218 moles um, in a volume, right? So VDM cube, and that will be my concentration. This is my initial concentration of HI. That's what I'm starting with, okay? I know that because... I'm starting with hydrogen iodide. Initially, I'm not going to have any of my products, okay? So I put a zero here for hydrogen and iodide because I'm starting with only HI. No, ha as the reaction proceeds and everything gets equilibrated, we're told that we have 0 0.023 moles of hydrogen at equilibrium. So I'm going to put that here, okay? 0 0.02 three moles of that, of hydrogen. And again, it's a concentration, so I'm going to have to divide by my volume of the flask, which is V dm cube. Okay, so now I need to fill in the blanks, right? I need to fill in the other spots here. I need to fill in what change, all of my changes, and I have to find ultimately the equilibrium concentration of HI and the equilibrium concentration of I, right? I too, rather. And so when we look here, what do we notice? We notice that initially we only had zero moles of hydrogen, but in the end, we ended up with 0 0.023 mole per V dm cube. And so that means that my concentration of hydrogen changed by this much, right? So that's my final, my equilibrium concentration minus my initial lets me know what the change is. So I can write my change in here. So I'm going to write that that changed by, let me put it back in white. So that changed by this concentration changed by 0 0.023 mole over volume. So that's my concentration that I changed by. Okay, so now to figure out how much this, the HI changed by, and how much the iodine changed by, we're going to have to look at our stoichiometry up here. And I see that for every two moles of HI consumed, 
one mole of H2 is, is formed rather, and then one mole of I2 is formed. And so what that means is that I have a two to one, one ratio. And so if my hydrogen changed by this much, because it's in a one to one ratio with my iodine, then I know that my iodine had to have changed by this much as well, because they are one to one. So anything that happens to this has to also happen to this. So my iodine would have also changed by 0 0.023 mole per VDM cube. So let's look at the hydrogen iodide now. I know what my hydrogen changed by and my iodine changed by. Look at this now. They are in a one to two ratio with the hydrogen iodide. So anything that happens to my hydrogen and anything that happens to my iodine, double that is gonna happen to my iodide. So if my hydrogen iodide. So if these change by that much, then this has to change by two times that much. Okay, because it's a two to one. So that would be 0 0.02 times 0 0.023 mole per V dm cubed. Okay, and so that works out, that would amount to in the end, that would be 0 0.046 mole per V dm cube. So that's what my hydrogen iodide changed by this much. And because I know I'm starting with it, it's gonna decrease over time. So if I want to find my equilibrium concentration, I'm gonna subtract off this from what I started with, okay? So my equilibrium concentration will be my initial concentration minus the change. And so that will get me here that would get me a value of 0 0.172 mole per VDM cubed, okay? And then my for my iodine, because I know that I started with zero initially, it will be an increase, so I'll add on this to my zero and I'll end up with exactly what I had for hydrogen, okay? So that would be 0 0.023 mole over the VDM cube. So these are my equilibrium concentrations. Um, they're asking for number of moles. So I guess once I got my equilibrium concentrations, I would just multiply through. You can just multiply each of these through by the VDM cube that's in the bottom. And so what we would have from a mole standpoint then for iodine is we would have 0 0.023 moles of iodine. And if I multiply through the hydrogen iodide by that same VDM cube, just so that I'm left with only moles, the moles of it then would be 0 0.172 moles. Okay, so these are my answers here. This for hydrogen iodide and this for iodine. Okay, so now that we have that, right, we're gonna go ahead and just clear everything. And then we're gonna move on to part two. And part two says we're supposed to write an expression for Kc, so that's the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration for the equilibrium, right? So my Kc expression is going to be this one. So it's going to be the concentration of my products. Those are going to be on top, right? Divided by the concentration of my reactant, what I started out with. And I'm going to square that because there's a two in front of that. So this is my Kc expression for this equilibrium, right? So now I, we have to find the value of Kc at 700 Kelvin. So this is where the equilibrium concentrations that we found out earlier would come in handy, right? And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to plug in those equilibrium concentrations here and here, right, to get our answer. And so let's write it out. So Kc 
will be equal to what was the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen we we were told rather that that was zero modes in terms of modes it was 0 0.023 moles and we have to divide that by the volume since it's a concentration, right? And then the iodide ended up being the exact same. It had the exact same equilibrium concentration as the hydrogen. So I'm gonna put that here. So that's what I have on top, okay? Um. So then let's just, and then in the bottom, I'm gonna have my hydrogen iodide concentration, which was at equilibrium, which was 0 0.172 moles over the volume, which is VDM cube. So remember, the reason why I'm putting in the V is because it's an equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, so I need to show concentration, okay? But something nice is gonna happen in the end is that because I'm squaring my HI because of the stoichiometry coefficient here, I'm gonna get V squared dm cube, and then at the top, because I'm multiplying this by that, I'm gonna also get V squared dm cube, and so what you'll find is that the volumes will just go away, okay? And so in the end, what we're left with then, and our moles, our unit of moles will also go away because in the top I'll have moles squared and in the bottom I'll also have moles squared. So that will go away as well. So in the end, all I'm left with is a calculation that involves the 0 0.023 for the H2 being multiplied by the 0 0.023 for the iodine, and then I'm going to be dividing that by the concentration of HI, which was at equilibrium, which was 0 0.172 squared. And so when I work that through, I'm going to get a value of, a KC value of 0 0.0178, and it's unitless, okay? So that's my KC value. It's unitless because all the units ended up canceling out. So that's my value of Kc um, for that equilibrium at 700 Kelvin. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this equilibrium now. So for part four, it says calculate the value of Kc at 700 Kelvin for the equilibrium of this reaction. Right, so what you'll notice is that this reaction here is literally the backwards reaction from up here. So in here, the forwards was going that way, and down here, the forwards is essentially just going back that way. Right, so now we have H2 gas. We're starting with H2 gas and um, iodine gas, and we're ending up with two moles of HI. And so if I want to calculate the value of Kc at 700 Kelvin for that reverse reaction, which is now the forward, there are two ways I can approach it, right? One way is I can just write a new equilibrium expression, a new Kc expression, where now this is my product, so I have that there squared, and then my reactants are these guys now, so I have them down there in the denominator being multiplied by each other, right? So remember, these are equilibrium concentrations that we have to plug in here, and it's important to remember at this point that if I go, whether I go, whether I attain equilibrium going from this direction or coming from this direction, going back that way, my equilibrium concentrations will be exactly the same. It doesn't change depending on which direction I'm coming from, okay? And so all the values that we calculated earlier are still applicable even though we're now going this way. Okay, and so I can plug those values in here. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. My equilibrium concentrations from before, I'm just gonna plug them in here. And so now what are we gonna have for HI? It was 0 0.172, right? It ended up being that when I canceled out the volume, I know the volumes are gonna cancel out, so I don't have to do that anymore. I'll just plug in the actual numbers alone. So this was 0 0.172 squared for the HI. And then I'm just gonna divide that now by the 0 0.023 that was for the H2, and then multiply that by the 0 0.023 that was for the iodine. And when I do that, I come up with a value of 55.9 for my new KC for this, for this um, reaction going this way. Now, it's important to note also that we could have done this another way, a shortcut really, is that 
your it's really knowing that your KC for your forward reaction, right, is equal to one over the KC for your backward reaction. Okay, backward. So essentially then, if we knew the KC um, for our forward, we knew that that was earlier, what we calculated, right? That was 0 0.0178. If I wanted to find my KC backwards, because this is essentially the backward reaction, I would do one, I'd write one over KC backward here, and then just rearrange it to find KC. So what you find is that my K C for this reaction, which was the backward from up here, backward will be equal to one over 0 0.0178, which works out to be exactly this, right? So there are two ways that we can approach this kind of a situation is to recognize that this 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 reaction that's written here was actually the backwards from up here so we could approach it this way or we could just write out a brand new kc for this reaction as shown here realizing that our equilibrium concentrations from earlier still carry over and then either way we would have gotten the same value of kc and remember kc is unitless in this case because all the units cancel out okay and so with that, we have come to the end of this question. Definitely give this video a like, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you in our next video.